the time has finally come. I will be finally testing Alder Lake against Coping, sorry, Comet Lake. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Chamber here, and yes, finally got my hands on an Alder Lake CPU. Um, I got the 12700K actually. I did not go for the 12900K. I'm gonna explain why right now. So first of all, all I needed was eight cores, eight performance cores. I did not care about the E cores. In all these benchmarks, I actually disabled the E cores. Didn't have a point for them. So I was like, eh, I just won't use them. Why pay more for something you're not gonna need? Now, yes, I do lose about five megabytes of cash. I don't know if that's gonna make a massive difference. Honestly, just overclock your RAM and you can basically get over that cash limitation. I mean, if you have maybe an overclock 12900K, maybe use the settings that I am. Test for yourself, post them down below in the comments if you're interested, and we'll see what FPS you're getting. That'll be interesting to see, actually. I built a brand new system fully. Literally, though, it's a lot different than my Comet Lake system. Comet Lake, I would have, like, a 2 dim motherboard, DDR4. N no, mm -mm. I went with the cheapest. I went with the Z690A DDR4, the cheapest MSI DDR4 board because I trust MSI, and it actually has custom BIOSes released by MSI. Like, I have a modified BIOS on it that allowed me to actually get 4000 CL14 on it. It's BIOS 124U2 if you're interesting. You gotta do a little digging online, but you can find it after that. So that's something good to see. Uh, yeah. Um, if you're interested in seeing more testing and stuff, let me down below in the comments and stuff also. And, and join the Discord if you want me. I'll see what I can test. There's little things I might not test for a video, but I can test in the Discord. So let's go over the actual test systems right now. Let's start with the 12700K. This is a 12700K running at 5.2 gigahertz on the core, 4.8 on the ring. E cores disabled. You cannot get a ring that high with E cores enabled. I'm not using the E cores because there's no point in gaming. Um, maybe I'll do a video actually where I turn them on and we'll see and then I'll also test hyper threading on and off Hyper threading is on for both these CPUs the RAM is running at four is dual rank so 2 by 16 B die 4000 CL 14 1515 with tune sub timings and tertiary timings It's pretty tight and then GPU for both is a 6900 XT running 2770 megahertz minimum 2810 maximum 2100 vram that's all the things that make a difference now for the comet lake system i am running my 1900k at 5.2 gigahertz on the core 50 on the ring on the z590 unify x from msi so two dim with 2 by 16 dual rank 4500 cl 16 6900 XT, the same thing, same overclocks. The reason that I'm not running the same clock speeds as someone like, you know, when Linus benchmarks or Gamers Access, they were like, we're going to use the same RAM. I'm not. I'm maxing out these platforms. I'm, I can't get 4000 CL14 running on my Comet Lake system. Just can't. Or at least I don't try. Why? Just get the higher bandwidth. So that's why these numbers are not the same. And I'm not running stock. I'm running overclocked. The goal of this channel is to maximize your gaming performance. That's what we're doing here. We're overclocking. All these benchmarks are at 1080p low because 1440p, you know, yes, that is my monitor's refresh rate. It's not the most popular resolution. 1080p is. And also, 1440p is more GPU bound. We're not doing a GPU benchmark here. We're doing a CPU. So, um, yes, let's get to the benchmarks.
Now, we're going to do the biggest benchmark first, and that is the box. This box looks better. Now, I know I don't have the 12900K, so I don't have, like, the golden sample. This box just looks cooler. Like, something about the 12900K golden, like, chip just looks like, eh. It's like, do that for the KS. They should they should do that for the KS only. But, I uh, um, yeah, like, 20% difference in everything. That's a big deal. So, what I can take that from is mostly just the IPC improvements. You're losing two cores and four threads. And I'd say that as you would. Like, that, that's a big deal, I know. But I was honestly, that was what I was worried about the most. Was, especially when Alder Lake was first released. Like, is the two extra cores going to matter more than the faster IPP, IPC? Because on Rocket Lake, they had a higher IPC but less cores, so it lost. I mean, even in games like Warzone, which are very core intensive, it was winning. Um, Fortnite did insane. That's a very single core threaded game. Same thing as CSGO. And then I threw in this 3D Mark benchmark because it is the it's one of the best benchmarks I've realized that can show gaming performance. So that's why I used it. Um, you can see games, so maybe a game that uses 16 cores, you can see the FP, you can see the rough estimate game performance difference. So, maybe it's a single thread, you can see that kind of percentage difference. Yeah. Um, take that as you wish. Um, what am I going to do with my 10900K system? Um, well, it's obviously e-waste now, so, um, it'll probably, I'm kidding, it's going to become my streaming PC. It's still a great chip. If you have a 10th gen or a Ryzen, don't feel like you have to upgrade. Don't be like, well, this person gets more FPS than me now. I need, I need to upgrade. No, you don't. Um, but I'm going to use mine as a streaming PC. X264, make it look nice for you guys on stream on Twitch. Twitch.tv forward slash chamber tech. Um, yeah. Like, it's like shocking how much faster this chip was. I like loaded up the bench, like I checked my benchmark scores and I was like, it's a lot. 20% is a lot. And you did get lucky though. This is a super good bin CPU. Most cannot do 5.2 all core. Most can't do, five, some can't even do 5.1. Like I work on PCs, if you're interested, chambertech.net forward slash FPS. Help me buy more hardware. Um, and you can literally, I'm not even kidding. There's some that can't do 5.1. They're stuck at 5. Like, I'll load up, like, OCCG, not even run the stress test. Just crashes. So, if my my advice is, if you're an overclocker, get the 1200K. Unless you're just like, I don't care about bin. Let's just have some fun. Because this is very variable on the bin. It's the same thing as with the 10850K and the 10900K 10th gen. So, is the 12700K worth it? I would say that if you're going from an older CPU, definitely like 8th gen Intel or any Ryzen that isn't 5000 series, this would be a worthy upgrade. Um, you could wait for new AMD, but at the same time, Micro Center is like slashing these prices and I was able to price match with Best Buy in the US. That's I got the chip for 350 instead of like 420. It's an insane deal, so I did it. Yeah, so my advice, if you're already happy with your FPS in your system, don't 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 have don't have a need to upgrade. You're fine. If anything, and you just want a little bit more performance, overclock your rig. Join the Discord if you don't know how to, we can teach you. Um and yeah. If you're temp limited on your current rig, buy new thermal paste. Cause dude, this chip gets hot. I I've I've got content planned. I'm like, I can do D lid, copper IHS, washer mod, liquid metal, so many things. This thing gets hot, dude. But anyways, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button down below. Subscribe, comment down below what your rig is, and honestly. Are you thinking about upgrading to Alder? Like, I'm interested to see what people are. Anyways, peace.